Megan, it's hard to believe it, but for plan ahead types like me, spring is right around the corner and that means warmer weather and more time on the go. Today, we're talking about the Vionic Vitals collection from our longtime sponsor, Vionic Shoes. These are the best essential styles for everyday wear to get you ready for the season. There's the Uptown Loafer, a super cute, chunky loafer that comes in 10 different colors and collapses flat for easy packing. And there's also the Chardonnay Heeled Sandal, which I just ordered a pair of in a bright cherry red. I don't wear heels a ton anymore, but when I do, they are always Vionic because they're just so comfortable. Yeah, and I was excited to see that the Willa Slip-On Flat is part of the Vitals collection because I have those in a bright blue and they are so much fun. Elevate your wardrobe with Vionic Vitals, a meticulously crafted collection with daily wear styles designed for comfort and versatility. And of course, the entire collection features Vionic's exclusive Viomotion technology, which is what makes their shoes so comfortable and supportive. The company actually got their start by revolutionizing medical orthotics. And then, lucky us, they just continued that right into fashion footwear. They even offer a 30-day guarantee, so you can wear them, love them, or return them for a full refund within 30 days. And we've got a great deal for you. Use code THEMOMHOUR15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's a one-time use only. Bionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Sarah. We're two moms with eight kids between us, and we're the hosts of The Mom Hour. On this show, we're joined by a team of unique mom voices from across the country and in different stages of motherhood to bring you tips, ideas, and encouragement, and to help you feel a little less alone. We all know that motherhood is a lot easier when real moms share honest truths and remind each other that it's all going to be okay. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to The Mom Hour. Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 442 of The Mom Hour. I'm Megan Francis, here with Sarah Powers. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Megan. How are you? I'm ready to have a little Venterfest. How about you? Oh, I like that. It sounds like Winterfest or something. I know. Like we're speaking German. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm very excited about this. Uh, you know, we both came back from our Thanksgiving breaks, and we were Voxing. We use Voxer to chat back and forth, some work, some personal and we both just had a few things that we needed to complain about. Some some uh, very trivial, petty, um, and some a little bit maybe, uh, uh, I don't know, a little more below the surface. But what I was realizing is I think that complaining and venting has a really important role in friendships, in connecting with people, and just like being a human. And um, we don't do it a lot on the podcast. We do try to frame things as positively as possible. But every once in a while, you just want to vent to your girlfriend. And so I think today's episode is like, let's all collectively um, grab a cup of coffee or tea and feel free to complain. And of course, because it's December, these are going to be holiday related vents. Yeah. And I was thinking while we were talking through what we were going to be venting, complaining about is that um, our all our lives are just full of little moments that are annoying or a hassle or whatever. Right. And we call them petty, petty vents or petty gripes, but it's almost like within every petty gripe is embedded a larger problem or like they're they're part of a bigger problem. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not just that this annoying little thing happened. It's like, what, what led to that happening or what does it mean for the rest of like the cascade for the rest of your day? So it, it really, it is nice sometimes to get them off of our chests. Yes. And I think, um, What is really helpful, at least I'll speak for myself, when I can complain to a friend and I know that friend is not going to either immediately try to help me solve the problem or try to get me to positively reframe the problem or even worse, remind me how privileged I am and that I shouldn't be complaining about this you know, problem in the first place. There's a few friends, probably I can count on one hand and then all the thousands of you listening right now. Um that I can do that with. And that is a wonderful, beautiful, sacred thing that I am truly grateful for, not even in a eye rolly way. So it's like, we need, we need sometimes to be able to vent without that next knee jerk thing where we feel bad for complaining. At least I do. Absolutely. Um, agreed. And I cannot help you with any of your vents, so I'm not going to try. No, 
No. Although as we move through them, I, I I think I am open to our listeners helping me solve a couple of my problems. I'm probably the first one I'm going to talk about. I, I am open to your actual solutions. Um, I'm probably less open to you telling me I sound like a spoiled brat because I know that we're going into this episode kind of um, knowing that these are pet events. Shall we begin? Yes, let's begin. Are you going to go first? Yeah, I'm going to dive in. I'm going to begin this official. I feel like I should ring a bell or something like this <laughs> event session is now in session and we are going to start um, by talking about what occurred when Brian and I opened up our holiday decor bins this season. We got back from our Thanksgiving holiday and I was very motivated to get the house festive and we dragged out the bins from our garage these are plastic, um, like the Rubbermaid big bins with the lids that snap on. So they should be relatively secure from nesting rodents. But <laughs> alas, that was not the case. And so I started to um, unpack a bin and I noticed mice droppings. And this is something I have come to recognize. And there are other places in our garage where I will sometimes see them. And it just makes me like a little cautious. I'm like, okay, I don't want to surprise like a, a family of sleeping mice for their sake and for mine. <laughs> um, and so I was starting to see the evidence. And I told Brian, I was like, I, I think there have been some mice in here. And then I was, then I started to see the actual, so there was the droppings and then there was like uh, evidence of like a nest, like some things they'd mm -hmm. gathered from our garage, little tufts of things. And I was like, Brian, I'm going to stop going through this bin and I'm going to go inside. And I, I don't know what I was doing. I was doing some other very festive. At this point, I'm still feeling very happy and festive and jolly. And um, Brian comes in a little while later and he's like, yeah, you, you made the right call by stopping when you did. And so he had uncovered, um, I believe in that bin, it was four live mice and one that had passed on deceased. Mm -hmm. one deceased plus all of their droppings, all of their nesting. And this was a bin that had our stockings and then some other, uh. I don't know. We're not super organized. I mean, it was all holiday related. Um, so we had to spread it all out kind of in front of the garage and like I, I, we, we dealt with it, but it, it added a, a lot of time and a lot of grossness to what I was anticipating to be a very, um, festive and bright and light filled, um, holiday decorating day. So that's the mice and the decor bins, my pet event. Number one listeners, if you have experience just securing your bins better or keeping the mice out, I'm, I'm open to those tips, but that doesn't solve my pet event for holiday season, 2023. Um, well, I feel you on this because first of all, that is very disruptive to the holiday spirit in many, so many ways. It's so unjolly. <laughs> yes. And I mean, I can picture mice with like little tiny hats. That is kind of jolly, but that's not what you were dealing with. And um, I have had mice. I have had surprise mouse encounters before in holiday decor, though not Christmas. I, they got into my Halloween stuff one year and I had to throw a whole bin out. Um, and like I found some in my bread box once, like a whole family of oh. tiny mice. And that was really traumatic. But the thing that I guess it never occurred to me could happen is that they could get into a Rubbermaid container with a snap on lid. Yeah. yeah. I think ours are like, they're a little bit old and I think are they bowed out a little bit. A little, at the top, I think maybe? the lids. Yeah. I think the lids don't fit as snugly and these are tiny, tiny little mice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Where there was, there's a will, there's a way for mice, I guess. And I feel like this was maybe like the main mouse house. Like I, I know they've been elsewhere in my garage, but I, cleaned a lot of their urine off of some bottle brush Christmas trees. It was just, it was so disheartening because the decor in there was so happy and the evidence of mice was so gross. So it was Does like, it make you feel good at all to know how comfortable and cozy they got to live for like a whole year. Maybe Brian did say they were really cute. I will. The, I, if they, if it had been a giant rat um, and I, I know we have <laughs> some of those, I feel like Yes, that would have been worse. So, oh, look at us. We're bright. We're, we are, you know, adding a positive spin. At least they were cute. Yeah, sorry. Didn't mean to do that to you, Sarah, <laughs> but um, I couldn't help myself. The, just the thinking about them being like in a cute little Christmas hat, like a cute little Santa hat. Is it you who shared on Instagram that like meme about, or did I share it with you about like anthropomorphized animals in little yes. cozy? This is like the this is a season to yes. anthropomorphize or something. Yes. Yeah. It, yeah. Okay, it's my we'll favorite thing to like do. That. Yeah, but I very much validate your concern and your event. It Thanks. was that is that is a venture fest right there. Thank you. 
All right, well, my, turn. my first one actually maybe isn't even that petty, but I'm going to do it first anyway, yeah. um, because it feels petty when I say it. And okay. that is that I am now, now Eric and I have been dating for, had been dating for three years and had been very serious. I've known his family for years. I've spent a lot of time with all of his family. So his siblings and kids and all of that. But this is the first year that I'm a, we are officially now like a blended family I just don't really like changing my, um, the way I do things. Yeah. And I would say that like up till this year, I could kind of opt in or opt out. And now I'm sort of like, I'm now I'm family for real. So I'm sort of obligated to take part. We are going to talk a little bit later about things that are new for us this year. And, um, I can talk about kind of the good side of that or like how I've been able to reshape it or make it work. But I would just say in general, I have had the privilege of being really able to um, create the holiday experiences that I want for a pretty long time Yeah, with obviously some limitations. It's not all about me. It's about me and my kids and my extended family and all that. But like when it comes to Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, I kind of drew a line a long time ago and said, this is the way I want this to go. And it's basically gone that way. Even yeah. through a divorce, I've kind of gotten my way about that those two days and now it's like oh there might just be some compromising happening and i don't like compromising i am greedy and selfish as we all are i am going to ask you a question that's maybe more like on the psychology of this do you think and i know we're already not keeping this as light as we said but do you think there's an element where with new extended family members you also have to care a little bit about not just like what they want to do and who, like what's the schedule going to be, but also what they think of you having your own opinions. Like I would imagine that there's like an added tension. So in your, in your old family, I don't mean your old family, but in the people who've known you for a long, long time, when it came time for you to say, you know, we're going to stay home this Christmas Eve, or we're not going to do that. You had years and years of knowing that those people loved you and accepted you anyway, and they might be a little disgruntled, but you'd get over it. These are fresh people. I think we talked about this in in an episode recently. It's like your boundaries or whatever you want to call this, like you're declaring what kind of holiday you want is now being tried out on a fresh crop of extended family. It's like I've got something to prove again or something. Yeah. And it is vulnerable to, so not only are you have to change, you have to be willing to change and adapt and that's hard, but also let's say you did want to declare something as non-negotiable or important the audience is fresh and, and I would imagine that would be a little bit scarier because you don't know how they're going to take that. Yeah, no, it, it is. And it, that all, that all like feeds into it. And I think it's like that with everything. Holidays are definitely not like, it's not holiday exclusive. Yeah. Um, There's like a whole new set of dynamics to navigate and all of that. But I think on the 24th and the 25th of December, I just want to reserve the right to be kind of selfish and greedy. And then it's like, doesn't even really matter if I get my way or not. It kind of sounds like I might anyway, just because we're shifting things around. But then I have to like kind of deal with the fact that like I have to recognize myself in the mirror a little bit, Mm -hmm. you know, like Mm -hmm. that it feels it's not it's like I have to recognize how petty I can be. Sure. Um, but while still probably getting to have the holiday I want. So I don't know. Yeah. It's not even really, it's not a vent. There's nothing to be really, there, there's nothing to solve. Right. Um, and it, it's not even like, uh, inconvenient or whatever. It's just, it is what it is. And I'm like, Oh, I don't really like that about myself, but well, yet there it is. We want the holidays to be free from all of those sticky right. feelings, but unfortunately they are there not. They are. There's yeah, the family around. of mice in the bin. Okay. <laughs> I have a feeling our next couple are truly inconsequential. At least mine is. Um, this still goes back to digging things out of bins and being very excited to decorate. A couple of years ago, I got a great deal at Target on string lights that had a white cord instead of a green. So the green ones obviously are meant for mostly for a tree or a garland or something with a green background. And these have a white cord and the plug and everything is white. And then there was the lights themselves. I had some all white and some multicolored. 
and they worked great for around the house because I, my walls are painted white and my like parts of my kitchen are white. So I loved just tossing them different areas around my house. I was very excited to get these out and none of them work this year. Two years uh. ago, they worked last year. I think they worked. Um, none of them. And I have, I, because they were so cheap at the time, I have like eight or 10 and they're kind of short. So they're great to like put on a windowsill or just like on the top of a table. How odd. None of them. It's none almost of like them now work. I'm suspicious that like they were set to like work for exactly one year or the way that they made, they were <laughs> they made like the bulbs. Obsolescence. Yes. Planned yes. obsolescence. Because when we were kids, remember that thing that would happen of like a one bulb is out and then like part of the string would go out. You would think there would be some evidence that these had ever worked. It's really odd that eight sets of identical string lights would all work and then not a single one works. And it was just it felt like it, my my mood was going down and down and down because I thought, oh, this one doesn't work. And I would get the next one I'm like this one doesn't work. Then I was switching plugs and switching. I'm like, maybe it's the outlet. No, they just. They're all gone, dead. It's like there's a little timer inside them yes. and they all exploded from the inside or something yeah. or melted down. How odd. I wonder if, you, you know what, you should Google that and see yeah. if like it comes up if other people are complaining. I think there should be a class action lawsuit. I know, right? You should spearhead it. It's disappointing. That's the all. the law offices of, you know, whoever on the, on the ball. Right. Right. <laughs> well, my next pet event is also light related. Okay. And this is not dead lights. Although the top half of our tree this is kind of funny. Um, so I last year had purchased a, um, after the holidays, I purchased my first fake tree and it was a big deal for me because I've had, I've had a real tree for a really long yeah. time and I was very much team real tree. I switched to fake because I felt like, well, we've talked about this before, but like the whole search for the, the real tree and then dealing with it was sort of dominating my holidays in a way I didn't love because it was making it so I couldn't just put the tree up when yeah. I wanted to. So now, and Eric's got a fake tree too. So now fa fast forward, we two, we have two fake trees because I'm now living mm -hmm. in his house. And so we set both up um, and the tree here, the top like third of it is in a different color lights because Eric swapped out the lights last year and then forgot that they were the wrong color. And then we put them up with the wrong color. So we got the wrong colored lights. But regardless, at both houses, every light we have is a stationary non-twinkle light. And I guess okay. I didn't like it realize they don't flicker? twinkle. Okay. They don't flicker. And I didn't realize how, I think on the, what I used to do is I would have one string because it came, the both one tree came pre-lit uh -huh. and the other one has just been lit. Like Eric put this, he strung it up and he never took the lights off. Um, I believe the way I used to do it was I'd have one string that would go around my live tree of, stationary lights, yeah. whatever you call them. And then, um, twinkle light, a string of twinkle lights over that. So you'd have like one string that never right. twinkled. And, and then, then the some, other ones mm -hmm. would mean. gently twinkle. I really like a twinkle light and there's not one in sight. Like I can't even find the twinkle lights. I don't even know where they went. They, I don't know if like, maybe when I decided I was not going to get, maybe when I decided I was going to get a pre-lit tree, maybe I threw them out. I really don't know. It's just, there's none. And I'm really missing the feeling of twinkly lights. It yeah. really does add a very different um, mood it really to does. a dark holiday decorated room. So, I mean, this is fixable. I could just go get some and put them somewhere, but, but it's like everything I meant to light is already lit. So now I'm like, well, where do I put them? Yeah. Where are the twinkles? Where's the twinkle? Yeah. Maybe I'll hang them on the mantle. Yeah. That's a good idea. Sarah, you know, when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. Maybe it's my rebel tendencies, but having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product the algorithm sends my way. You know what's not too good to be true, though? Our sponsor, Ritual, and their clinically backed Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean, bioavailable forms. And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh minty essence in every bottle. So you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients, and set ambitious climate goals. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. 
Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. Sarah, have you seen the new collection from our sponsor, Vionic? It's called Vionic Vitals, and it offers some of Vionic's best essential styles for everyday wear to help you get ready for the spring, which is not that far off, by the way. The Willa Slip On Flat is in the Vitals collection, and I have to say, I have a pair of Willas, and they are one of my favorites. This shoe has classic and classy loafer styling with a seriously supportive footbed, and they come in over 12 colors to complement any outfit. I've also got a pair of Vionics Uptown Loafers on the way, which I'm really excited about because they collapse flat for packing. I'll definitely get a ton of use out of those when I'm traveling this spring. I know, and that feature is so smart. Well, Megan, I am also very excited about the Vionic Vitals collection. These are versatile daily wear styles that feel as good as they look. Yeah, and let's talk about that comfort, Sarah. Vionic actually got started by revolutionizing medical orthotics. Today, they continue to use that science to engineer shoes that are super cute and also feel great on your feet. Vionic even offers a 30-day guarantee. Wear your shoes, love them, or return for a full refund within 30 days. Use code THEMOMHOUR15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's one-time use only. Vionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Okay. Well, you were just talking about your journey to the artificial tree, as my mom likes to say, instead of fake. She thinks that sounds better. I have been on a parallel journey, same as you. Um, This is our second year with an artificial tree. And I, my pet event is that there is a part of me that's just missing the real tree. I'm not going to lie. And I was really ready for all of the reasons you said. I wanted to be able to put it up anytime. My kids are getting older and it is hard to find an evening where we can all, even if we're just going to Home Depot or like the parking lot, it's not like we go, we don't go into the mountains to cut one down or anything, but the project of getting everybody to go out and get one, get it back home. That was really, really fun. And I enjoyed it. And then I was really ready and I got a great deal. I was, I'm really happy with the fake tree I bought. Um, It looks beautiful. So it's like, Maybe this is where the pettiness comes in. Like what you were talking about when you when you have to look in the mirror and just say your feelings out loud, they feel unflattering. It's like I feel like I did everything I wanted and I should not miss the real tree. But there's part of me that does. And ours is in our um, we have like kind of a formal living room that sits in the middle of our house and you walk by it all the time. You don't always go into this room, but you sort of pass by it. And it looks so beautiful. And there's something about that sensory experience of not smelling when you walk by it. And I've already like been trying to come up with ideas for having boughs um, kind of like somewhere near so that I get the olfactory experience while walking by. And even that is leaving me feeling a little womp womp. Like now I'm not going to like I'm not going to do anything about this. I am really I'm still happy with the fact that we made the switch. I know we could go, I could go to the tree lot and get a smaller one and put it in the kitchen or something. This has, this is a solvable problem, but this episode is about the pettiness and yeah, I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of missing it. It's like, there's a piece of my Christmas heart that is unwhole. Would you believe that while we were putting up the fake tree um, at the old house, which, you know, we're using as a rental, but basically we've left it open for November and December for kids coming and going mm-hmm. and things like that. So it's decorate. We're like, we're yeah. decorating it. And, <laughs> uh, my kids said, Hey, when are we going to go get a tree this year? I didn't realize we were doing this. And I was like, are you kidding me? I mean, to his credit, Will last year was up at college and didn't come home in time to go get the tree. And, and he was always sort of the one who spearheaded that. Right. But everybody else last year, we went and like chopped a tree down. And it was as though I had dragged them into conscripted army service. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And I'm looking at them like, are, do you guys remember last year how you all stood around helplessly? Well, I think it was like Owen and I saw the tree down and then no one wanted their hands to get sticky. Oh, so like no one wanted to carry it back. It was like, no, but this has been me. I have been dragging you all across the finish line with this tree. <laughs> And then all of a sudden they're like, well, we all want to decorate. I'm like, since when? You haven't wanted to decorate it for years. Yep. They, they'll they go in the room and kind of half-heartedly stand there yeah. while I decorate it. But they don't 
they don't take part anymore the way they used to. And so anyways, I was, that was another petty gripe. I'm standing there like, I don't even know what you guys are talking yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my, oh gosh. my gosh. I love well, this. Okay. I'm going to switch away from a light related and tree related um, vent to talk about things under the tree. Okay. I feel like I had this exact same vent last year and perhaps the year before, but my kids want the most boring stuff and it's not fun to shop for. Mm. And yet I don't want to go off the list too much right. because then I'm spending money on something they may or may not like. Yeah. So I'm, I stick pretty closely to the list, but like Owen wants button down shirts. Oh. <laughs> That's his request. That's just an example. I was at Meyer the other day. That's our kind of target like store. And I walked past the toy aisle and I never thought this would happen to me, but I had the biggest sense of like bittersweet, oh, nostalgia, yeah. longing mm -hmm. for that feeling of knowing that you are going to blow your kids minds. Yeah. Yeah. And the it all is in it's all there in the toy aisle. Like it's and it's fun. And it just Clara will want to feel like I can kind of go a little bit creative with her. I can get her some hair things or whatever, like stuff like that. But for the most part, the stuff they all want is pretty, pretty pedestrian. And it's just not that fun anymore. It sounds like you need to start spoiling a grandchild. But I'm not supposed to solve your problem. No, thank you. No, and and that's, we're not there yet yeah. with that either. So, you know, and I also don't want to be, I'm, I'm only a step. I'm trying to remember my place, but I also don't want to be that grandparent who steps all over the kid or yeah. all over the, the parents. Yep. Fun, yep. Which I know a lot of our listeners have experienced yep. that. I don't want to be that person. Yep. So yeah, we'll see how it goes as, as little baby gets older, but I'm just laughing at the, the boring requests from your kids and like, trying to it's just such a it's an interesting um phenomenon and yeah I could see how that would just not be fun to shop for I love giving gifts and and Owen in particular is a kid who doesn't really he does not really want to be surprised because in his mind what he's chosen is a very yeah it's, it's a very reasonable and logical choice yes and if I like decide oh but I want to get you this or that he's almost offended if I spend money on him that he did not specifically request that I yeah. spend. Okay. And he's just one kid of many, but they're all, all the requests I'm getting from all of them are either like nothing or boring. Yeah. It's just not as fun. No, it's not. All right. Well, here's another extremely inconsequential problem I have. Um, we traveled for Thanksgiving. We were gone Saturday to Saturday, the whole week of Thanksgiving. So when we got back, um, we went right into that last Sunday of the long weekend where I was cleaning mouse poop out of bins. And we didn't have a real Thanksgiving dinner while we were away. We went to a restaurant and they kind of attempted it, but it wasn't like the all the fixins. And so my kids were good sports about this, but everybody kind of missed some of the traditional fare. And I told Violet on the way home, I made the mistake of being very confident that between Christmas and New Year's, the grocery stores have totally acceptable grocery store pumpkin pies. Like, you know, if you go into a big box grocery store or I know Trader Joe's has them, I think Costco has them. I said, Violet, pumpkin pie is procurable throughout the whole holiday season because a lot of people have it at their Christmas dinners. I was like, yeah. it's not a problem. When I'm going to be going to the store this week, we, you know, we're restocking from being away. I'm just going to buy the first pumpkin pie I see and a can of Ready Whip. And that's her very favorite. She truly loves pumpkin pie. And I like it too. I especially like it kind of cold or like with my afternoon coffee. And I just, I had the hubris to assume that this was not going to be a problem. And Megan, I will tell you, I cannot <laughs> find a, even a mediocre grocery store pumpkin pie. And I have been, now I haven't been specifically going out for pumpkin pie, but I've been living my mom life, which includes popping into quite a few different retailers over the course of the last week. And not a single one has had even like in the day old section, like I'm not holding out for a really amazing pumpkin pie. I just want a pumpkin pie. I've also looked in like the freezer section, like maybe there's like a Sarah Lee situation. I cannot find one. And I did ask yesterday and she's like, oh, no, we don't. But tomorrow morning we will. So now I'm wondering, do they make a like where are all the pumpkin pies and when will they kind of 
come back as we get closer to the actual Christmas holidays. Am I am I off anywhere here? So I'm so you what you're saying is that all the grocery store pumpkin pies that were there the day before, the day of, and the day after yeah. Thanksgiving, let's say, have all gone into some kind of hiding. And or, will not or reemerge till out. later. Well, yeah, and I, but I, Weird. Think I maybe I'm wrong. I feel like pumpkin pie is also around quite a bit during the Christmas season. Do you disagree? No, no, I agree. Okay. But what I was going to say is, I find that very strange because I just feel like it's the kind of thing people are going to eat for the next month. That's what and I, okay. I'm glad. Have you have, have you been validated. to Costco? Have you been to Costco? I haven't because Costco is really far. From where I yeah. live, I have to go on purpose. The, well, the only reason I ask is that I was at my aunt's house on Friday. So it would have been the day after Thanksgiving, but I think she had gone that day and she had a great Costco. Yeah, I think pie. the Costco ones are really good. The Trader Joe's ones, maybe next time I go to Trader Joe's, they'll be back. I think they, I think what happened, <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm just going to like armchair analyze this. I think what happened is plenty of people have like a Friendsgiving or a gathering that happens that like, like you said, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And so for those days, people kept, you know, going to the store, picking up a pumpkin pie and maybe all of the suppliers and the bakers and the distributors just were a little pumpkin pie weary. And we there was like this hiatus that I've been it was yeah. in the hiatus that I was, you know, sniffing around. But I would hope that very soon it shouldn't be that hard to get a grocery store pumpkin pie. Can I can I make a suggestion? Sure. Sorry, I know we're not supposed to be doing this. Is it to go to Costco? No, okay. I would never do that to you. This is much easier. This okay. is much easier. Make it buy the buy the already done can that has. It's not just pumpkin oh. that you make into pumpkin pie. It's literally, pie it's like can? basically done. It's oh, um, pumpkin that. pie filling. I, you might have to add like egg or something, but it's it's really really easy. And then buy a pre done crust that's in a yeah. that's not even the one you have to roll out, like right. the one that's already in, in the, the thing. Tin. Yeah, have Violet do it. I know. I did think about that. It's so easy. It's like so easy that honestly, it will be easier to do that than to plague yourself with this quest any longer. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. I just I assumed it would be so easy. I know it's a very valid vent. (laughs) Okay, good. Um, And I'm sorry to have to like try to salute solid, but I want you to have pumpkin pie because now I'm thinking about it. I want some too. I'll report back. I'll report. All right. Let me know. Okay. What's next? Okay. Well, this is another one that's like petty, but like, but it makes me it's, it's, it's not, it's petty. And also it illuminates things about myself that are uncomfortable. Sure. Um, I really want my spouse to love Christmas as much as I do. And he just doesn't. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like my codependent issues make it really hard for me to enjoy myself. If people around me aren't enjoying themselves and not just tolerating, but like really into it. And I, um, I, it's just not the case. He yeah. has kind of like a melancholy response to Christmas. Okay. It's just the, the whole holiday season, I think bums him out a little bit and he goes through the motions. Like he does the thing, but I can tell he's just not that into it. Yeah. And I'm like really into it. And I want us to both be really into it. And it, it's not like, yeah, he'll do all the things, but there's just a deadness in his eyes about it. And I codependently want him to love it too. And, and he doesn't. And that's, that's just reality. I think that's very fair. I think that is a very totally fair and honest vent. Did you um, know this the first holiday season that you guys were together? Or does it feel more pronounced now that you're truly married and home sharing? Um, I knew it. But what I remember being really nice about that year is it was COVID. It was COVID Christmas. Uh-huh. Um, and people like everything was different. Nobody did things that year as the, well, I'm not gonna say that it was, you know, the end of 2020. So there would have been people, people were gathering and, but it was really different then. It's kind of hard sometimes to even remember how different it was, but yeah, I don't think our families got together. Yeah. I don't think so. People just kind of hold up. And so he and I got to have, um, like a very different experience than I think we have since or had ever before that. Mm-hmm. So it was actually really lovely. And I was just going to his house. Yeah. It was his house and my house. And I did all my stuff with my kids at my house and yeah. got to be as festive and frivolous as I wanted. And then, um, you know, really after the kids went to their dads, I think was when I went and hung out with Eric that day. And it was just a really nice day where we just didn't do anything, which was, I that's how I always do Christmas day anyway. But it felt almost like even more 
cozy and cave-like because yes. there was nothing to even do or well, and at no that expectations. Time in COVID, yes, that's what I was going to say. At that time in COVID, we had kind of trained our brains to be happy with literally anything other than <laughs> anything yes. being masked and, and separated from our loved ones. So any amount yeah. of sh- community, even if it's one person that you got to snuggle on the couch yeah. with, felt we were grateful for. Yeah. Yes. And so, you know, and then the following two years, I guess I kind of knew more and more, but again, it was like, I was still doing my thing in my home and he was doing his thing in his home. And then we would just kind of come together once our respective kids were off doing other things. Yeah. So this will be the first year that we're really sharing the holiday. And he's not like a Scrooge about it. He's not yeah. bah humbugging or grinching or any of those things. He's just a little less enthusiastic than me. So yeah. with the day that we were decorating the tree, I kind of apologized because I said, oh, I feel like I'm stepping all over your toes. Like I'm, what did I say? I'm hogging. I'm hogging it all. And he laughed. He's like, you're not hogging anything. <laughs> Please yeah. take you know, it all. do all, take it all. And I was like, oh, okay. And how great that I get to do it all. But then I'm also kind of like, oh, but that means you don't really like it. You know, it's, yeah. it's totally, again, unflattering because it's not good enough that he yeah. Just lets me do it. He has to like it too. Yeah. I mean, that's not really a very reasonable request for me. And that's why I, it's petty. And yeah. that's, and it's also kind of uncomfortable for myself. Well, we did not plan this this way at all. I don't think, but my final vent is also spouse related and really also, I don't know if it's codependence, but it's certainly about uh, being slightly grumpy about um, not having a fully participatory partner. And that's kind of what you're talking about. Yours in a, in an emotional sense. And I think mine in a little bit more of a logistical sense this year, but my husband is in a season of work life right now where there is almost no bandwidth for anything else. And I say that both like schedule wise, very busy, but also kind of more in mental space. Um, so This is new because he's had, so he's, he's worked for the same company for 18 years, but he's had different roles and different demands and different kind of like, I don't know how to articulate it, but we're like, you know, that thing where work kind of takes up almost every inch of your headspace, even when you're with your family, even with your, you know, like it's not a scheduling problem. It's not like he's working 6am to 9pm every day. That's not the problem. It's more that I could say, Hey, honey, could we sit down with the calendar real quick and look at kind of the next few weekends and talk about which things to go to and and all of that? And when you're talking about like loving the holidays for the for the emotional aspect and the festive aspect, you know, I love a good plan and a good calendar planning session almost with that same festive fervor. And it's like I don't know that he said this in this many words, but it's basically like. I cannot care about that. Like you tell me where to go and where to show up. And you know, Brian, Megan, he's, he'll do it and he'll be wonderful to be with at the time, but he cannot care about the schedule. He cannot help me plan the trip we're taking after Christmas. It's very much all on me right now. And this is like a, it's a, it's a consensual, uh, um, we, we, we're, we've gone into this season of work and life knowing this is how it's going to be. And I think that's what feels petty. Kind of like when I was complaining about the tree, I know that this is the reality right now. And I'm a willing participant in the role sharing. And I, on paper feel very supported, certainly financially, and then in other ways, but then going into the holidays, it's like, it's just me. I'm the one being like, okay, I guess we'll go to this party and not this one. I guess we'll um, invite the grandparents to this. Like it is feels a little lonely at times. Yeah. And that's the thing for you that you don't like. And you can also agree. Like you can know that the trade-offs are worth it to your family and still be bummed about the trade-offs. Yeah. Like you can say, oh, this is what has to happen. And it's totally going to be worth it because it's going to be, you know, it's going to put Brian's career in this position or it's good financially for the family or whatever. Like those can all be great things. And yet there's still the trade-off. You don't get to skip over the trade-off just because it's all work. In the end, it's worth it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right. That is a particular like vulnerability of mine is feeling like I'm the only adult in the room. Um, And that's something I've learned about myself. And so knowing that, first of all, that's not actually true. I have a very capable and caring adult co-parent. It's just looks a little different than maybe it has in the last few years. So I have to like 
therapize myself a little bit about that. And I have to find other ways to enjoy like, yay, I get all the control. I'm completely driving the bus right now on the home front and on the holiday festivities front. And, um, but I think what you were saying about Eric wanting him to enjoy it, it's the same thing. I want, even if I'm doing all the work, it's like, I want someone to like give a hoot a little bit. And that's the part that's like, just not possible right now. That feels like very not inconsequential. I feel like we got deep. Yeah. Yeah. Those are cheap. Deep, not petty. Those are deep <laughs> under the surface vents. Uh, well, I guess this next one of mine is also honestly not that petty. It seems petty on the surface, but then when you dig in, I think I kind of teased this in the beginning that even a petty vent often has something underlying mm-hmm. it that's not so petty. And I will just say that as my kids get older, I don't control their schedules anymore. Uh, I haven't controlled my oldest kids' schedules in quite a long time. And, but for some reason, it's always felt like I could still, I could still sort of, um, mastermind the holiday. I was still the puppet master of the holiday and everyone would kind of show up when I said so. Right. And now it's just a little different. Like now the kinds of jobs they're getting are different. Um, college schedules and things like that have begun to kind of creep in and I, it's not up to me anymore. And, um, I never loved that, but I, but it doesn't really bother me that much except at the holiday where I really want to be like, Oh, can we all just get together on this day and then have it be like, no, we actually can't. Yeah. And by everybody, I mean my children. Like I, I really want still to be able to like have the day that we're, you know, the several days where we're all just going to hang out. And, and I just, that's not how it is anymore. Everyone's got their own stuff going on and that's adulthood and young adulthood. And, Mm -hmm. um, it will just become more and more and more not like that, mm-hmm. not like it used to be, but I don't love it. It's a bummer. Does it give you kind of compassion for the other side of our younger listeners who, you know, rightly vent and totally fairly vent about their mothers and mother-in-laws um, who want, you know, everyone to gather on a certain day or everyone to drive across town with the baby. And I'm just yeah. thinking like, it's, it, it's always good when we can sort of get a peek into the flip side. And it feels like that's what you're saying a little bit. Uh, Well, and I remember very clearly being that young, um, in my case, very young mom with the babies and the little ones and being like, sorry, I can't do that anymore. Or, you know, we had to move across the country for my ex-husband's job, so we can't come at all or whatever. And I, yeah, yeah, I, I'm not mad at anybody about it or even frustrated with them. Like I totally understand it. It's, it's reality and it's just a bummer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We are welcoming a new sponsor today, Dr. Mom Butt Balm. Sarah, this might sound a little weird, but when my kids were babies, I actually really enjoyed changing diapers. It felt like a little time out to connect. Oh, yeah, Megan. I can totally remember that feeling of just kind of leaning in and enjoying a little moment in your routine. Yeah, but when my babies had diaper rash, it made the whole experience so much less fun for both of us. And back in those days, we didn't have great options for rash cream either. It was usually goopy, heavy, and full of dyes and preservatives and other things I didn't really want to put on my baby's butt. Well, the creator of Dr. Mom Butt Balm, who is a mom and also a doctor, had the same experience, Megan, and she did something about it. Dr. Mom Butt Balm is free of dyes, preservatives, and zinc oxide. It's easy to apply, easy to remove, and you don't have to use a lot to protect your baby's skin. I really love the way this balm feels. It's almost like a high-end skin cream. Very nice, no strong scent, and definitely nothing like the diaper rash creams I used to struggle with. Don't let diaper rash come between you and your baby. Shop for Dr. Mom Butt Balm online at Amazon or Walmart today. Sarah, when my kids were little, I was always pretty torn on whether to give them a daily multivitamin. I knew that modern kids' diets have some pretty big nutritional gaps, but I also knew that most children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They're filled with sugar. They have all kinds of chemicals and preservatives in them. And I was like, why would I give these to my kids? Luckily, two dads recognized the problem and came up with a solution. Haya, the pediatrician approved, super powered, chewable vitamin. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. 
Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Your first shipment comes with a cute bottle that has fun stickers your kids can use to decorate it too. My kids always loved that. And we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, go to HayaHealth.com slash MomHour. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash MomHour and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Okay, Sarah. Well, we've gotten all the venting done that I think either of us can handle. Um... But we also thought it would be fun to talk a little bit about some things that are just new this year. Just a couple of things each that are different or new for us. And the biggest one for me is that I've got a new house to decorate. And in fact, I have two houses to decorate. And that's been really fun. Like the fact that we kind of still have the house, that's a rental, but that my kids are staying in it on and off over the holidays, which means I've got like a really good reason to decorate it. I wanted to decorate it even if we were Airbnb it. Like if I like the idea of having holiday decor yeah. over the season regardless. But now that I know my kids will be staying there, they were there for Thanksgiving and they'll, my older kids will be there for Christmas and New Year's. So it's been nice to kind of get to decorate yeah. our old space for them. But then of course I brought a lot of stuff over to my new space that I share with Eric now and have been decorating over here. And I even bought some new stuff, which I don't really buy a lot of new decor holiday to holiday, but it felt, it felt like a good time to do it because Eric's, house that is now my house is so different aesthetically from really any home I've ever lived in. It's Mm -hmm. very, we've talked about this. It's very lodge feeling, Mm -hmm. cabin feeling, lots of wood. And so I was like, color, I felt like was just going to kind of get lost. Um, The the walls are kind of dark. So I bought some driftwood Christmas tree and like deer Um, figures and just some things that just, yeah, yeah, nature inspired and some things that are like whites and creams because they just kind of pop out against the wall and the Mm -hmm. wood a little bit better. And I um, dried some orange slices that I'm going to be this weekend hanging. And so it's just, it's like a really different way than I've actually thought to decorate in previous homes of mine. And that's really fun. It's like, it's been fun to kind of have this fresh start feeling and to have some say so over, you know, where are we going to put the tree? Of course, we put it in the same spot he used to because it's the best spot. But yeah. there was some conversation that went around that and like just how to kind of do it all. And um, I just I ordered a couple of tablecloths that are going to show up, I think, in the next day or two that took some doing because I'm very particular. T- tablecloths for me are kind of like shoes and purses. I don't I couldn't tell you what I'm looking for, but I know what I'm looking for. Yeah. And if I can't find that exact thing that I'm not happy. And, you and I probably have a 10 minute conversation about exactly like if, if someone wanted to listen, you could probably like list the things that you require, you yes. know, but, but they're all specific to you. It's not yes. just like, I need this dimensions. Exactly. Um, so anyway, that's been fun and exciting. And I think I will just kind of continue to mess with it all through the season. It feels like I have a lot of room now that the basics are all done. Like it's basically decorated and I'm early to that. It's not super early, but because Thanksgiving fell early this year, it feels really early. Yeah. Um, anyway, that is all, uh, that's all good stuff. And it's all there, like the palettes there. And now I could just, or the, the um, canvas is there and now I just get to keep adding to it. Well, I have two things to say about that one. I think it's kind of perfect and fitting that you talked about having a spouse who's not quite as, um, you know, twinkle lights behind the eyes about the holiday as you and you have two houses to decorate. It's almost like it like like the cosmos is balanced out or something. Yeah, he's not into it, but you get to do. So I get twice as much. Um, So I love that. I would like to see photos. And that all sounds really fun. I want to do my dried orange slices soon. I have not gotten to that yet. And the other thing is, I, I have noticed this, at least when you get to decorate a space that you're not going to be actively living your life in, I think it, for me, it opens up like a little more freedom somehow. So that sounds really fun to decorate the, the extra house, the spare house. Um, Yes. It's truly like decorating for a space that no one's really living in full time. So it can be a little impractical, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. 
impractical yeah. and maybe even less of your own judgment. Like yeah. I can be like, oh, I don't, this is ugly or I don't like this or it, this is chipped or something. It's almost like a little, like a less precious about it all. Like, oh, let's just throw up some tinsel and it'll be more festive than nothing, you know, more than yeah. better than nothing. Um, I love that. Well, I'm glad we're doing this because um, we have done so many holiday episodes over the years and there's so much about the holidays that is meant to be tradition and the same and all of that. But it's it's also worth noticing, like, what is new this year? Because I think everybody's got something that's new this year. So uh, for me, for the very first time, I have created a cozy tea bar, tea station. We'll call it a tea and cocoa station. I know this is right up your alley and I have been leaning heavily on your expertise and advice in doing this. This feels so self-indulgent because it's the most not, nobody asked for it. I drink tea in the winter when I'm chilly, but I am not a tea drinker the way you are. Like I, I can go weeks without having a cup of tea. I just, but I have this, we have this room, we call it the rec room. Um, Listeners have heard about it. You've stayed in it, Megan. And it's kind of a rumpus room. The kids watch TV in there. There's a big projector screen. Reed plays video games. When the kids have sleepovers, they're in there. It, when we have a guest, the couch pulls out. So it's this kind of bonus room that's used for a lot of different things. It has in it a very nice wet bar. There's a mini fridge. There's a sink. Um, and there's a nice countertop. And it's not during the regular, like li- living our life in our house. It's not you- the wet bar itself isn't used for anything specific. And I just thought I am going to set up. Um, it started with the electric kettle because I have an electric kettle. I've heard you talk about yours. I know tea drinkers, especially like just really swear by their electric kettles. And I have one and I thought I'm just going to set it up there. So that if I do want a quick cup of tea, that it's it's right there, I could just push a button. And then I thought, well, then I'll just put all my teas there. And then I thought, okay, well, I could add a little festive cheer. I could add some lights. And I spent the better part of an afternoon this week setting up my cozy tea and cocoa bar. I have a half and half in the fridge. I got sugar cubes because you recommended that. Uh, I have all of my teas on a platter. I put a lamp in the corner. I put string lights. Um, What else? What am I missing? The kettle. Um, There's a little um, dish towel rack that I already had there by the sink. So I put festive um, like hand towels, tea towels, um, a pretty tray. And I had so much fun. And I actually think I am going to use it like I I have been having tea more because there's this room and this room is right off of our kitchen. So it might sound weird to put all of this like far from the kitchen, but it's really in the next room. And because it has its own fridge and sink, it's a perfect little tea station. So I'm very excited. Um, this sounds so satisfying. I will say that for a very long time in various houses, I have had my tea, coffee, whatever station, hot drink station separate from sometimes just for space reasons. Um, sometimes because for a long time I had a little cart where I kept all my teas and it just made sense for that to be just off of the kitchen. And I could see a a future in which I move our tea situation out of the kitchen. It Mm -hmm. just it makes a lot of sense. First of all, there's so many pretties and yeah. like, I don't want to take up all my counter space in my kitchen. So it's nice to give it its own breathing room. So I, I love that. And I was very um, honored to be part oh, yeah. you of were the process of putting that together. Consultant by proxy for sure. Yes. The other thing <laughs> that felt kind of indulgent in the best possible way for me is I am a coffee drinker as my, as my primary caffeinated beverage. So I, I was like, should I make a coffee bar? Like, what is this weird that I drink coffee, but I'm making a tea bar. But here's why it's not. I'm a pretty boring coffee drinker. I There's not as many accoutrements. Some people might like fun things in their coffee. and But I drink it black in the morning and a little oat milk in the afternoon. I have exactly one mug in the morning and one in the afternoon. And I brew it in a drip coffee pot. So even though I love my coffee, it doesn't lend itself to the sort of delightful excess of a tea station and a cocoa station. So, yeah. Well, my last what's new is actually kind of the flip side of what um, I talked about in event. And that is that I have a legit blended family (laughs) this year. Like I'm actually in the family now. Yeah. Here's what I will say is new about it. And this is kind of like the positive side of it is that I have all the same relationships, like all the people are still there. But now that I'm in the family, I have more say so over how plans are made. Mm -hmm. 
and can take a more active role in shaping those plans. So when it came to things like, you know, like the in-law family Christmas, I could kind of opt out before right. because I was not an in-law. So I was like invited, but I also didn't have, yeah. yeah, and I didn't have any control over it. So I kind of just didn't sweat it. This year I was like, well, now I'm the wife, so I need to get in front of it. And so actually I am now finding that it's quite, it's quite open for, um, to be changed. It's quite open to be shaped. And, um, that's great. So now I've, I kind of have a little more say so over the plans and that's, that's nice. So now it's like, I have new things to do and, um, more things to do than I might have had before, but I am finding that I can be an active participant in the deciding of when those things happen and how they happen. And that's, that's nice. I bet that there are some family members who really love and welcome that too, because it is nice to have a fresh, like fresh energy and someone who, I I mean, I know you're not coming into steamroll. So someone to come in with opinions and ideas that are delivered kindly and generously, I, I would bet that it's a breath of fresh air. Sometimes it's hard if everybody's sort of defaulting or nobody has an opinion. So that's how I'm I'm finding that my assumption before was that there was a way things were done and that right. I was going to have to find a way to deal with that. Actually, the reason things were the way they were is because nobody was getting around to planning anything until like the last minute. And my only conduit was the dude. Yep. Now that I have access to the women, it's a totally (laughs) different story. Right. Right. So, yes. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I love that. Well, my last what's new this year is a big one. And that is that we are I, I think I may have hinted at this, but I haven't really talked about it on the podcast. We are traveling right after Christmas, which I don't remember the last time we have done other than like a, maybe a two hour drive to my parents when we were living further down south. But um, we are going overseas. The five of us are going to London and Paris and we leave on December 26th and we come back January 5th. So I am planning the normal holiday stuff up through Christmas Day. And then I am also planning our first international vacation. Um, And so far, I mean, talk to me in a couple of weeks, but so far it hasn't felt too overwhelming. It has felt weird because if we were if we were going to be gone for actual Christmas and Christmas Eve and stuff like that, then I feel like I wouldn't be some of the Christmas planning would be off of my plate because we would be right. somewhere else. But we are actually here all the way through the 25th and we don't leave until late afternoon on the 26th. So I'm. it's like you're planning two whole holidays. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. It is a lot. But the planning of international travel has been novel to me and very energizing and very satisfying so far. And going back to the flip side of my vent about having a spouse who's sort of unable to participate in administrative and logistical planning, this is one area where it's really benefited me. I am just like completely in control and I like that. So um, that is what's new this year is the, the normal holiday at home has a lot of familiar rhythms. We're going to do a lot of the same things. We'll see my parents and my brother. Um, And then it's like a a switch will flip and we will do something that we've never done before. That's very different and also requires a lot of planning. Um, And I'm really excited. And so I will shamelessly ask for any listeners who are London or Paris based I am now no longer requiring major itinerary advice. I have most of that locked in. What I would love is restaurant, cafe, pub, like can't miss this specific eatery recommendations. I would absolutely take those. Um, And same with like shopping or shopping areas, like a charming street or a market. Those are the kind of things, you know, we always talk about like the rocks and then the smaller rocks and the pebbles. I don't really need advice at this point about where to stay or what major attractions to visit. But if I know we have listeners who live in London, I'm not sure about Paris, um, but also people who've traveled. And I really actively right now am looking for that, that kind of like the pebbles, um, especially eating and drinking. Um, I would love some recommendations. Well, I cannot wait to hear more about this trip as, yeah. as the plans come together. And then of course, as, as and after you go, I expect um up to the minute reports while you're there. I know. I know. I have to, and a whole another episode is 
thinking about my relationship with Instagram. That's the easiest way is just to Instagram <laughs> the whole thing. But I've really been on a bit of a hiatus. So you will be like, like with my, I'll be your bar. Instagram. Yeah, you, yes. just <laughs> my private feed, subscribe to my private photo stream. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, this was fun. Um, I'm really happy we had a chance to vent to each other. And, you know, I welcome petty vents, inconsequential holiday gripes from our listeners, especially when they're delivered. Like maybe don't vent about us to us. Yeah, though. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> no, but seriously, um, we love to get your emails. We eventually try to respond. We may not respond because of holiday craziness, but if you feel like you would feel better getting a petty vent off your chest by emailing hello at the mom hour.com, I promise we will read it. Um, and enjoy it and send our thoughts back to you. Which will not include us telling you to get over yourself. No, it may not include us even <laughs> writing back if I'm being really honest with the holiday busyness. But um, if it helps you, we would love to read it. And thank you for listening, everyone. We will be back with you a week from today, next Tuesday, and we'll talk to you then. Talk to you then. Thanks for listening to The Mom Hour. Everything we talked about in today's episode is available at themomhour.com. And hey, while you're there, you can find more than 500 podcast episodes, plus articles, playlists, and resources about motherhood and parenting at every stage. And if you like today's episode, we'd love it if you would take a minute to share the show with another mom in your life. You can also find us on Instagram at The Mom Hour, chatting and interacting with listeners between episodes. Thanks for being here, friends. We'll talk to you soon. Sarah, I have been having just the best time making my new podcast, The Teas Made. I launched back in November, and so far I've covered topics like staying warm on cold winter walks, nurturing creativity, how to be a great host, and even Nordic secrets to loving winter. Well, you know I am fan number one of The Teas Made. It's got such a cozy vibe, and it seems like you've really hit your stride in covering topics like wellness, self-care, comforting rituals and routines, and home and family life. Just look for The Teas Made with Megan Francis wherever you get your podcasts or head to theteasmade.com to find all the episodes. Hey everyone, Sarah here. Megan and I would absolutely love it if you hit pause right now, right where you're listening and left the mom hour a rating and review. If our show has helped you feel a little more confident as a mom or a little less alone, that's one of the absolute biggest ways you can thank us. And it really takes about 30 seconds. If you're listening in Apple Podcasts, just navigate to the Mom Hours show listing. So not the episode you're listening to right now, but the kind of landing area for our show as a whole. And then scroll down to leave a rating or review. Thank you so much.